to the book of Genesis, the Old Testament book of Genesis. We're turning to the first book in the Bible this morning, Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17. And we're commencing our reading from verse number 1, please. Genesis chapter 17, verse number 1. And when Abram was ninety years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect, and I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, in their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Down to verse 15, please. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarah thy wife, thou shalt call, not call her name Sarah, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed, and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is an hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee Behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. And he left off talking with him, and God went up from Abraham. Amen. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to that reading of His own precious truth. God wants to begin His message this morning by asking three questions. Three questions, all focusing this morning on one thing. That one thing this morning that God wants to ask you and I this morning concerning is the Christian life. God wants you to focus this morning, just now, as we commence God's message. God wants to you to focus this morning on the Christian life. Let's make it a little bit more personal this morning, because here's what God really wants you to do. 
God wants you this morning, just at this moment, to focus on your Christian life. I want you, child of God, to forget about everybody, everything else for a few moments. Because God wants you to focus on your Christian life, not on the life of the Christian beside you or in front of you or behind you. God wants you to focus right now on your Christian life. And here's the first question God wants to ask. How do you see your Christian life? I wonder how you would answer that question this morning. How do you see your Christian life? I wonder how you'd answer that question. Because here's the second question. The second question is this this morning. How do you experience your Christian life? Your Christian life, child of God, your personal Christian life, how do you experience it this morning? Third question, how do you acknowledge your Christian life? Yes, your Christian life. I wonder this morning, do you just see this morning, do you see your Christian life a, a life that's to be lived? Do you see the Christian life this morning as a life that's, that's different from everybody else's life? Do you see your Christian life this morning as a, a life where we have to do our best for God? How do you see your Christian life? How do you experience your Christian life? Tell me this. What experience are you having in your Christian life? You know what many of God's people would tell me today? You know, my Christian life is no different from anybody else's. I don't see my Christian life any different from anybody else's ordinary life. I see my Christian life going through the motions every day. Going through every day with the same motions. Making sure I read my Bible. Making sure I pray. Making sure I do this. Making sure I do that. Making sure I do the other thing. How do you see your Christian life this morning? How do you experience your Christian life? Tell me this, child of God, how do you acknowledge your Christian life? Your Christian life and my Christian life is more than a life to be lived. Your Christian life and my Christian life this morning is more than just being different. You see, there's so many today on their Christian life, and maybe this is yours, I don't know. Your Christian life today has no blessing. No real blessing. Your Christian life for quite a while now has become dry. Your Christian life has become empty. Your Christian life has become powerless. Your Christian life, almost you've got to that stage now where your Christian life has no meaning. There's no blessing, there's no power, there's no joy, there's no nothing. And the big question is, why? Well, this morning, here's what God wants you and I to do. He wants you and I to revive these Christian lives of ours. Because wait till I tell you, do you see the world outside these four walls? I wonder how they see the Christian life as it's lived through you and through me. Because mind you, outside these four walls, there's people watching and there's people looking just to see as to how you live your Christian life.
How do you see your Christian life this morning, child of God? How do you experience it this morning? Listen, do you see the world outside these four walls? It's not a definition or a new definition they need from you and me this morning concerning the Christian life. Do you know what they need? They need a demonstration. And it's your ministry, child of God, and it's my ministry, and it's our responsibility this morning to make sure this morning we demonstrate to a world outside that God is real. It's you and I, our responsibility this morning to demonstrate through these lives that Christ is real. It's up to you and I to demonstrate to a lost world out there that Christ is everything to you and me. You know, your Christian life, my Christian life, ought to make the world jealous because of what we have. Your life and my life should make the world crave for the something that they don't have that we have. Ye are the salt of the earth, the Lord Jesus says. And you know, child of God this morning, I wonder does your life, my life, cause people to thirst for something that they don't have that we have? Do you know what God wants to, to say to us this morning? In fact, He wants to do for us. God wants you and I this morning to experience what our Christian life ought to be. God wants to revive your Christian life into something that He wants to do. And listen, God wants to do through you this morning, and He wants to do through me something extraordinary. The Lord this morning wants you and I to have a life that He wants to bless, that God can use, that a God can accomplish His will through. Listen this morning, child of God. Your Christian life is not just a life to be lived. It's a life God wants to bless. It's a life God wants to work through. It's a life that God wants to make an impact on the community where you live. And it's a life where God can really fulfill His accomplishment, His will through you. But how do we get into that lane where we can live our Christian lives in a way that we would know real joy, real power, real blessing in our lives? Where does it begin? It begins when you find the perfect path to boundless blessing. Where do you find this perfect path, as I call it? that will lead us into a life of untold, boundless blessings. Where is it? I'll tell you where you'll find it. Genesis chapter 17, and you'll find it in verse 1. Let's listen to our text this morning. And listen, this is God speaking. This is not Abraham speaking. This is not George McConnell speaking. This is God speaking. God, listen to it. At the very last part of, of Genesis 17, this is what God said. I am the Almighty God. Walk before me, and be thou perfect. Now, that's the perfect path that will lead to boundless blessings in your life, child of God. And you'll never know power, you'll never know blessing away from this path. Listen to the text again. Listen to what God says. I am the Almighty God. Walk before me. Be thou perfect. And I want you to notice, first of all, what Abram had to acknowledge was this. He had to acknowledge this revelation. Listen to what it says. I am, God says, I am the Almighty God. Do you know what God did in Genesis 17 verse 1? God broke 13 years of silence with those words. For 13 long years, 
God was silent to Abram. Ever since the day Abram took matters into his own hands and took Hagar the Egyptian to wife, from that day to this day, God never spoke to Abram for 13 years. I'm sure there was a time Abram wondered, is God finished with me? Abram never heard the voice of God. I'll tell you this, God didn't abandon Abram, but I'll tell you, he was silent to him. Why was God silent to Abram? Because of disobedience. Why was God silent to Abram? Because of unbelief. And child of God, there's something God wants you and I to learn this morning. Do you see when it comes to the matter of disobedience, God does not take disobedience lightly. And God does not take unbelief lightly either. Especially when God shows you and tells you what he's going to do and he's able to do and we disobey him. And God, Abraham, Abraham takes matters into his own hands. And after 13 long years, God breaks the silence with these words, I am the almighty God. Wonder is Abram's experience, is your experience. Maybe it's not for 13 years this morning, but, but in recent days your Christian life of late just seems more of an existence. There's no blessing in your Christian life this morning. Your Christian life is one of death. It seems that God's destiny. God's distance to your present, His presence. It seems God's deaf to your prayers. God seems dry of His power. And this morning, child of God, maybe this morning you feel that your Christian life is going through a period of spiritual dearth. Perhaps like Abraham, you have obeyed Sarah. Rather than obeying God. When we lapse to disobedience, it leads to disaster. And here, 13 years of waiting has taken place, but God's plan in those 13 years was to bring Abram to the end of himself. Before God could do with Abram what God had already planned for Abram. You know, sometimes God will bring you and God will bring me to the end of ourselves. God will bring you to a place where you think to yourself, I'm useless, I'm powerless, what can I do? That's the very place God will bring you till before he'll work through you. And here's Abram this morning, 99 years of age, and I'm sure he's thinking to himself, I'm finished, I can't do nothing now, ah, but that's the very place God wanted him to get to. To prove to Abram that I am the Almighty God. Sometimes God's silence is the great school to educate us in the subject of obedience. I'm going to repeat that this morning. Do you see God's silence? Sometimes God's silence is the great school to teach us in the subject of obedience. Remember Moses was away on the backside of the desert. He was there for 40 years. He had neither sight nor sound of God for 40 years. Why did he set him there for 40 years for? So he could bring Moses to an end of himself. Yes. Wonder this morning, child of God, is your Christian life dull and dry? 
There's no blessing. There's no power. There's no nothing. Here's something God wants you to notice. The revelation to acknowledge, I am the Almighty God. That's the first time God ever referred to himself as the Almighty God. The Hebrew name this morning is El Shaddai. El meaning the God of power. Shaddai meaning the all-sufficient. El Shaddai meaning all strong. El Shaddai meaning nourishment. I am the almighty sufficient God. Do you know what we all need this morning if we're ever going to know blessing in our life, if we're ever going to need power in our life, if we're ever going to know God's power, God's presence, God's blessing? You know the first thing we need is to get a fresh glimpse of God. Abram needed a fresh glimpse of God this morning, a fresh look of God. I am the Almighty God who can do anything. I am the Almighty God this morning that can meet any need. In Genesis chapter 18, verse 14, he says this, Is anything too hard for the Lord? Jeremiah 32, 27, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too, too, is there anything too hard for me? You know, child of God, what I, what, I, what I do many a time, I lean on too much, and I'm talking about myself here, I lean too much on what I think God is rather than leaning on as to what God is and who He is. And Abram this morning got this revelation from God, I am the Almighty God. Listen, child of God, maybe this is the place, this is the moment, this is the meeting where, you, where God wants to appear unto you afresh. For that's what you need. That's what we all need. A fresh look at God as to who He is. I am the Almighty God. There was the revelation to acknowledge. Notice the text again. There was the direction to which Abraham was to adhere. Look what it says. He says this in verse number 1. I am the Almighty God. That's only the start of it. Here's the second part. Walk. Listen to what he says. Walk before me. God's blessing, God's power doesn't come too easy. There's conditions to consider. If you want your Christian life, child of God, and if I want my Christian life to be a life of blessing, there's considerations to consider this morning. Conditions. Walk before me. Men, you be careful how you walk. The Bible has a lot to say how believers should walk. Paul says in Romans 6 verse 4, walk in newness of life. Thou, friend, that's how we're to walk each day. Walk in newness of life. Romans 8, verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Oh, you'll never know blessing, child of God. You'll never know power in your life if you're walking according to the flesh. You want the Lord to come into your life afresh this morning and bless you with countless blessings. Listen to what Paul says in Galatians 5, 16. Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Now, here's what God wants to say. Are you listening? This is what God wants to say. If you want to know to experience and to have real power, real blessing, real joy in your life. Then you've got to acknowledge this great revelation. I am the Almighty God. I, and you've got to adhere to the direction in the text as well. Walk before me. Do you know what the Bible says about Enoch? 
Now, this is what it says about Enoch. Enoch walked with God and had this testimony that he pleased God. Do you know what the Bible says about Noah? Noah walked with God. Notice Abram's different. Don't walk with me, walk before me. What did God mean to say, walk before him? This is what he means. That he was to take every step. And each step that he would take, he had to acknowledge that God was watching every step he took. That's walking before God this morning knowing that you have the all-seeing eye of God upon your life, and for every step you take, you walk in the knowledge that God knows every step. It's not walking about this morning, child of God, with a big Bible under your arm and you're dressed to the 90s. All that is half time, it's only an all outward show. Every step that we take, child of God, you remember this because I'll tell you I was humbled. Every step we take, God will hold us accountable for every step. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And every step and everything that you do and everything that I do will be tried by fire. And I'll tell you, there'll be no big men at the judgment seat of Christ, believe you me. It'll be the most frightening experience for believers when their works and their lives are tested by fire. And it'll happen. Every one of us shall appear before the judgment seat of Christ, and every step you live down here and every deed you do will appear at the judgment seat of Christ, and Christ will pass judgment on it, not on your sin. And everything that you do will be tested and tried by fire. And there will be no proud preachers, I believe you, me, at the judgment seat of Christ. Hebrews 4.13 says, All things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. And you know, child of God, when real blessing comes into our lives, then we have got to acknowledge this great revelation. We've got to see God as he really is. I am the Almighty God. And we've got to adhere to this direction. Walk then before me. Do you see? Listen, child of God, this is something the Lord told me. This is what the Lord told me now. When we acknowledge this great revelation as to who God really is, and when we begin to adhere this direction that he shows us here in Genesis 17 and 1, walk before me, that's when real blessing and power will come into your Christian life, and not one moment before it. Not one moment before it. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15, See then that you walk circumspectly. And listen, child of God, you can run to every prayer meeting in the country and run to every meeting there is, and it's no use to you. If you're not walking right, you can run to every prayer meeting, every Bible class, but if you're not walking right, believe me, it's no use to you. God doesn't say you're to run to every meeting. You know what God says? Walk before me, and you'll be walking right when you're going to the meetings. This is what God's saying this morning. Do you want me to bless your life? Do you want to know my power in your life? Do you want to know my blessing that I can really bless you with? This is what God wants to say to you this morning. Listen, I want to bless you with blessings unimaginable. I want to make your life real. I want to make your Christian life vibrant. I know you're my child, but this is what you're missing out on. Maybe we need to listen to God this morning as I had to listen. 
Maybe that's what I needed. Maybe above everything else, I need to get a fresh, close look at God. I am the Almighty God who can do wonders beyond our very imagination. And maybe I would need to listen to him as to how I walk each day. I have to walk each day with every step taken, knowing that God has taken into account this as to how I walk. There's the revelation to acknowledge this morning. There's the direction to adhere. Notice the perfection to achieve. Be thou perfect. God's not saying you're to be sinlessly perfect because that's impossible. The Lord Jesus himself said, Be thou perfect as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Listen, child of God, you're to walk before God in your business. You're to walk before God on the farm. You're to walk before God in the factory. You're to walk before God on the building site. Last but not least, listen to me, you're to walk before God in your home. Chuck Swindle had this to say. In one of his churches, there was a man, a youngish man, the most likablest fella in the meeting. His name went forward to be a deacon. He was elected, and everybody looked upon him as an excellent deacon. Many years passed, and he was. The church acknowledged his gift, and they approached him to see would he become an elder. Church voted. This man became an elder, and was a faithful elder. Then Chuck Swindle said he had a gift in preaching. He was a powerful preacher. This went on for many years until Chuck Swindle visited the home one day. And this man wasn't in. And the wife broke down in floods of tears. Mr. Swindle, You don't know my husband. You ask the children, and they'll tell you what he's really like. All these years, Mr. Swindle, he has been an unkind father to my children. And he's been an unfaithful husband in our marriage. And child of God this morning, listen. God sees everything that's going on in your life and God sees everything that's going on in my life. The Christian life is not a life to be pretense, pretended to be lived. It's a life that is real. And it's a life that can know the blessing and power of God. And listen, God not only wants to bless your life, God wants to use your life to be a blessing to others. Now let's, let's listen before we close. Let's listen to God. Here's what he's saying to your heart, and this is what he's saying to me. I 
I am the Almighty God. Walk before me. And be thy perfect. Genesis chapter 17, verse 1 is where you'll find the perfect path to boundless blessing. And may every one of us not only find it, but follow it in obedience as to how God has shown it. Our closing hymn. Number 689, please.